welcome back to another instalment on the red coat. You'll have to excuse my voice a little bit in this one. I'm getting over the flu, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I begin to think that this project might be just a tiny bit cursed because every time I try and do anything on it, I keep getting these knockbacks. Never mind. We shall persist. I've got the outer body here all pinned together. This is the basic shell. In our previous video I did the lining for this portion and construction for this is going to be extremely similar. There are going to be some minor differences but we'll come to that in a bit. One of the main ones is there are some external cuffs to put on. These were salvaged from the first iteration of this coat so they're already lined in the silk that I did this in originally and I don't really see any need to modify these at the moment I'll just sew these back together as was. One change I'm going to make from the way this was made originally is to actually put a bit of structure into the front of it. It was never really a huge problem because this velvet is quite thick and it's got quite a bit of structure on its own, but a little bit of help wouldn't go amiss, particularly for the fur elements which could do with a bit more support. To that end, I'm going to use some horsehair canvas this is a fabric that is very, very stiff in one direction and very flexible in another, so it's quite nice for using on jacket facings like this. I'm using quite a large piece, so we'll be going all the way back to the seam on the shoulder, all the way to the front of the lapel here, and all the way down to the bottom. You don't always need to use this much, but because of the design of the jacket and the amount of material that I got, this felt like it made the most sense. This panel will be sewn on and we also need to make sure we sandwich in the fur for the lapels. And there's no pockets on this piece of the jacket at all. The pockets are actually going to sit lower on the body in the skirts so we don't need to worry about any of that which is nice. Here are the other elements of the coat that I want to incorporate. We have the cape which I shan't be changing anything on at all. The shape of it is perfectly fine for what I want to do. It's already fully lined on all three sections. And there's just nothing really to change here. The only thing that I'll probably change is it used to have, you can see, just a tack here to hold the middle down. I'll probably put a few more in when it's on the coat just to stop it flopping up too much. We have the fur lapels, I've got to finish taking off some of the lining on that one and I've got to trim a bit of errant fur on that one but otherwise they're ready to go. And then the collar which is currently inside out, I'll also be adding some of this horsehair canvas just to give that a little bit more stiffness and structure. I'll salvage these nice leather covered buttons from a defunct sheepskin coat many years ago and it turns out they're a pretty good match for the fur and they look quite nice against the velvet so they were a rather excellent find because this will want some buttons on the front I've not figured out my spacing exactly yet but I suspect that all five buttons won't go in here I think they will probably drop down onto the skirt section which isn't here at the moment. Next job then is to sew all of these various accoutrements together and just as we did with the lining there aren't many seams you've got your two princess seams on the back, the two seams on the shoulders, one seam on each sleeve and then of course the sleeve cap which will have to ease very slightly just to get all the fabric in there. It shouldn't, hopefully, take too long. Just reminding myself on this, how I put this together in the first place. It was a very long time since I made it, and a very long time since I unpicked everything. But I think I have it. The red velvet here is the panel for the front of the coat that goes around the side to that back princess seam. This is your armhole here. And this is the interfacing that we'll be using which just lines up and sews along that top edge there. We'll probably also catch some of it in the armhole here when we do that. 
Underneath the canvas, you need to make sure that you put the fur lapel on first. Now, I wasn't sure if when I did it before, I cut along here and did a seam and did it that way. But I had some fiddling about and I figured out that if you lay the fur down on top of the velvet and use pins to mark where the seam should be, so that it's this way around effectively, you can then pin along where this seam's going to be so that, flip the fur up. Now, of course, you can't press any of this because you can't press fur and you can't press velvet, at least not very well. And once that's secured, then you put the canvas on and sew along these edges and then this panel is ready to put together for the rest of the body. I'd also forgotten just how annoying fur is to work with. As soon as you trim any of it, it just floofs out everywhere. But it is worth mentioning one quick thing here. When you're sewing fur, sometimes, as with this one, there is a, a fabric backing because the fur, of course, is like a, a leather on the back, which is the tanned skin. And then this just gives some extra structure to sew to. Um, when you sew the seams, it's best to brush the pile of the fur in, like this, so that you end up with a nice clean edge, as much as you can manage, because then when you turn everything the right way out again, you don't end up with all of this fur trapped in the seam, because, well, as we'll see later, there is a little bit of pulling the fur out of the seam to get a nice finish. I wasn't sure if I was going to leave this in or not, but I'm going to because it's another important sewing lesson. That looks lovely, right? No problems. The fur's gone on really nicely, the seam's nice and tidy, I've not got too many clumps or anything like that. I've got the back all ready to go. And it's all completely wrong. Because that bit of fur there is supposed to be on the other side of this velvet because that bit of fur is part of the lining. Respect yourself. That's the lesson to take away from this, is respect yourself. If you're not feeling particularly well, if it's affecting your clarity of thought, respect yourself. Give yourself some time until you're better. I'm clearly not quite as well as I hoped I was. I'm just... I'm kind of frustrated at the moment. I want to get this project done. I want to make sure I don't miss my video release dates. And I've already lost quite a few days to this flu and it looks like I'm gonna lose probably a couple more. Through the power of editing and movie magic, of course, you won't have to wait ages and ages. The video will just continue in a few moments. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to tidy up I'm going to have some honey and lemon tea, and I'm going to sit on my bum for a while because I think that's the sensible thing to do, and sometimes we have to do the sensible things. See you in a few. A new day and a nice clear head, and I could actually spend some time looking at this and problem solving. And it's quite straightforward once you actually have a nice clear mind to deal with it. I've laid the fur for the lapel face down and then I've laid the lining material face down over the top of it because our fur and our lining material are both going to be the same way out when we've done the seam. When you drape the lining over the fur it will show you where the edge of the fur fabric is there. Mark that line and then you can take away the fur panel. Pretend that we've got some marks on here, because once you've got those marks, you then need to shift this line across, and this is for your seam allowances. If you sewed here, this panel would then be too narrow. So you need to make sure that you move the line you marked across, because that will put your seam in the right place. So when you fold these two pieces out flat, it will be what you need it to be. Now I've already done one side, and I trimmed off what I didn't need, which is the piece that's pinned on here. 
Now I know both mullapels are the same size and the same shape, so I knew once I'd cut this section off here that I could just flip it over and put it face down on the other half of the lining and just pin it in place. I can then chop this off on this line here and we just sew the relevant lapel to the relevant side of the lining and that's then sorted out. This should have been in the lining video but I didn't realise that putting the fur on was supposed to go on the lining. Both the lapels sewn on, so this is the seam that you end up on the back and then on the visible side the fur basically hides the seam completely. Now you will sometimes get this where the fur is stuck in the seam but you can tease it out with a pin or sometimes this uh, seems to be particularly forgiving. You can actually just do it with your fingers by just running a fingernail through like that. Just a little bit of patience, but honestly the pile on this is so thick that it doesn't really matter that much. I've got both sides in. So that is now the lining for the upper half done. I should have done that in the last video. And uh, it's quite heavy at the moment, so it's weighing down in a way that isn't how it's going to look when the coat's done because the lining's extremely lightweight so it won't look quite like this when it's finished. Next thing to do is the collar and I need to put on the strengthening fabric, the horsehair canvas. I've already pinned this in place and the piece of horsehair canvas I've cut out slightly too big on purpose. I'd rather have it slightly big and trim it back than trim it too close and then not have enough. I'm going to sew directly along the original seam line for the collar and the horsehair canvas I've put on the back of the fur with the collar turned inside out. This means when I turn it the right side out this will be on the inside. I'll quickly buzz round all of that seam but not this edge, this is where it joins onto the coat and that will be another piece ready for the body. With the collar turned the right way around We've got a nice crisp edge on everything, and uh, the back is the velvet. And the really nice thing is just how much better it now holds its shape. It used to be quite floopy, like these are, and because of that extra horsehair canvas, you can almost mould this into the shape that you want, which means it should lend a little bit extra structure to this upper part of the coat and help keep it wrapped around because um, it is nice and warm, but it can be a little bit awkward when the collar's floopy. Shouldn't be a problem now. Also, when I do the body, the outer of the body, the same thing will be true for the lapels, because I'll have the same interfacing material to give us some extra strength on the front. And I guess that's the next bit to do. Just as with the lining, on the outer, we'll be sewing the left hand and the right hand panel to the back panel. I'm going to start with the seam here and then we'll do the seam here. Now the interesting thing with velvet of course is you can't really press it. I mean you can get velvet pressing boards but I don't have one and it's not really a material that's conducive to being pressed however you do it. So you just sort of have to rely on the fact that it'll all just flatten out eventually and being a plush fabric it doesn't matter if it's a little bit soft looking on the seams. Once we've got these done we then do the shoulder seams up here which go to the seam here and that's then the body basically done. Um, we can look at attaching this to the lining and the collar and all that sort of business. Body all sewn together very very quick and simple. It actually does make sense the way that these bodies are put together when you think about it because it comes from a period of time originally before the sewing machine so any time you can save on sewing seams is a good thing because hand sewing obviously takes a very long time. The fact that there's only the three seams on this body compared to a modern suit that can have four or six seams sometimes more if you've got darts and things in there yeah, I can well see why this is the method. It's nothing to see on the front particularly because, well, there's no pockets, there's no external details on the front. All of the detail work really is the big impressive collar. 
on the back. Bear in mind this hasn't been pressed and I do have the sleeves stuck underneath here so it's not as good as it will be but generally speaking the pile does actually make up for the lack of pressing. It, it doesn't really cause much of an issue. One thing that I did notice, I'm not sure how well it will pick up on the camera, is this fabric, this fake quilted fabric, um, does actually show through ever so slightly. It pushes the pile of the velvet out a little bit and it's made this very subtle diamond pattern on the back which is quite nice. Um, I don't think a lot of that will be visible though because we've got that big cape to go on so I think a lot of that will disappear. But it is still nice to see a little detail like that popping up that you've not planned for uh, that suits everything else. I'm going to do the sleeves next but I'm not going to sew the sleeves to the lining just yet. I want to finish all of this outside stuff first before I decide how exactly I'm going to approach that because of course the sleeves do have some external cuffs and I've not entirely made up my mind on these yet. So there's a little bit more planning as I go on this. Overall, happy so far? Let's uh, sew these sleeves up and get those in. Now, if you've seen the previous video, you've seen how you ease the fabric to put the sleeve caps in and that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm not going to go over that here, I'm just going to crack on and do them because we've already done it in this little series and uh, we'll come back to the sleeves when I'm finishing off the cuffs with whatever approach I decide to take there. I think that would be uh, more sensible. That turned out quite nicely. There's just a little bit of ruching going on, I, I don't really know why. It's velvet, velvet does whatever it's going to do, but I like how it looks, so that's okay. I did make a decision on the cuffs, and I am going to put these additional cuffs on. And I also decided I'm going to do some velvet facing on the inside, rather than running the um, silk sort of lining right to the cuff here. I think that's just going to look a little bit nicer, and the sleeve does feel a little bit better with the weight on the end. The only thing I'm not sure of is they're a little bit snug. They're not so tight I can't get them on, but I think I would like an extra you know, quarter of an inch in here. So I might split this seam and put functioning buttons on the cuff, just so it's a little bit easier to get my hands through the sleeves. Uh, and also give me the option to wear slightly heavier garments underneath this, should I need to. Although, from experience, I know this coat is incredibly warm and I usually don't need another jacket underneath it. This is the other sleeve and before I sew this up I just wanted to show you how I'm going to go about doing the cuffs. So I have the cuff piece from the coat as it was originally made and it's to mimic a turn back cuff. So this is the edge where your hand would be like that. So that's the open edge of the cuff there, and then we have this sort of curved shape around the back. So when they're on, and of course it's lined with this silk, uh, you, they fold over and then you have buttons on here. And originally I had three buttons along there. So we'll do something similar to that, I think. Although they won't match the buttons down the front if I do this, but we'll come to that later. Anyway. The other piece that you need is a lining piece and this goes inside the sleeve. And this one's quite easy to make. I had a strip of velvet left over that was just the right thickness and you effectively just copy the bottom of the sleeve. And you just make sure your shapes are the same for that and that will give you your lining facing. When we do the inner sleeves, I'm going to cut a little bit off here, about half the thickness of this, so about that much will come off the end of here and then I shall hand sew it. This will allow the lining just to roll down, hide all of this and be a nice tidy finish. To put the cuffs on, first of all, find your centre point on this piece and your centre point on this piece and line them up. You should find 
that this turn back cuff is slightly narrower than the sleeve itself and this is basically your seam allowance you don't want this to be trapped in the side seam of the sleeve and then we lay that piece on top so this piece will turn to the inside this will stay on the outside first stage you sew along here and then you'll sew the side seams of the sleeve as you would do normally but being careful to make sure that you keep the turn back cuff here away from where you're sewing because you don't want to trap this in this side seam you only want this on this seam here once you've sewn your seam you'll end up with something like this and this is the facing which rolls to the back and that's the cuff so once this is all actually sewn that seam comes all the way down like so and you have a pretty decent finish now because this is salvaged from the first build of this coat there's some marks in the velvet but I personally don't mind that I think that's perfectly fine next step is to make sure that when we sew these edges in that you can see we have a little bit of a gap here well, if you fold the cuff in like so you can actually get the fabric for the sleeve over it without catching it in the seam and that's fairly important when you pin this seam it's fairly straightforward until you get to the bottom here and you just have to remember to turn this facing as though it's an extension of the rest of the sleeve which it sort of is and just make sure that you haven't pinned the um, well, I can't show you at the moment because it's inside there but just make sure when you pin it that you don't catch the turn back cuff section in that seam and you should find when it sews it ends up like this and all your edges are nice and free well that's both sleeves on which is great and you can see it's starting to pull the shape of everything together nicely now which is what we want this one went in quite a bit easier but everything's sitting a little bit funny because I forgot to do something now some of you will have spotted this as I've been working along and were probably shouting at me for not doing it but I'd forgot to put the horsehair canvas in on the front and uh, it's important that I do that at this stage because we catch it in the shoulder seam up here so I've just unpicked the shoulder seam on both sides and have everything pinned I'm going to redo those two seams and that will give me the structure that the front needs this I mean you can already see it makes the velvet sit very flat which is what we want um, and that will help with the structure. Now this doesn't go all the way around to the back, in fact it doesn't even go the fullness of the front of the jacket because it doesn't need to. The back of the coat doesn't need this sort of extra structure in it because of the nature of the garment um, so we, we leave the back without any lining at all. That will actually flatten out against my back just because that's how these garments work. I have also been looking at my extras and I remembered the first time I made this that sewing the cape on and sewing the collar on and sewing through the body up here was incredibly difficult even for this machine it just it's a lot of thickness of material and I did break a couple of needles if I remember rightly so what I'm thinking instead is I'm actually going to make the cape a separate piece because I still have some of this edge that I used as a bias binding type tape on the pockets for the lining. I think if I bind the edge here with this tape and then use a couple of buttons I can fix this onto the coat with some buttons. That also makes it removable should I ever want to for any reason I can't think why I would 
And it also means that sewing the collar on is going to be an awful lot easier because I don't have as much material to go through to do so. Here's the seam that I've redone. I've done that on both sides. And I've also attached this to the seam for the armhole, although I didn't unpick that. All I did there was attach on the seam allowance side. And that helps keep all of this panel in place. Now obviously we are inside out at the moment. When the lining goes in, that will hold it on this side as well. But there's still quite a large portion of this that can just move around. So I'm going to put a few tacks just quick little hand stitches. They don't go all the way through to the outside of the velvet. I'll just pick up you know, the inside fabric here and we'll just tack this down just to hold it in place and stop it moving around on the lining. Uh, and it, it also helps keep everything nice and smooth and flat. Well, it's now time for a whole lot of hand sewing because I can't do anything more on the body until I've put the hand sewing in for this piece. It does move around quite a lot I've found as I was putting on the mannequin so hand sewing that down will definitely help. I absolutely love how this collar is behaving now. Wherever I put it to it stays put and it just looks a lot smoother and a lot flatter and I mean that is fantastic. I love that shape, I love how that looks and I've never been able to get it to stand up like that because I didn't know when I first made it about the horsehair canvas but it is the perfect thing for what I want it to do. The other bit of machine sewing I've done is I've put this tape on here. It's not a true bias bind because it's not cut on the bias but it does the job well enough and there's enough mobility in this velvet that I can get away with it. So I need to turn these edges round and hand sew and that will hide all of these raw edges and uh, yeah, I'm definitely sewing this on separately or using buttons or hand sewing it or something. I'll figure it out at some point because this was just this piece was hard going through the sewing machine. It didn't like some of it. So I think this was the right decision. We're getting down to just the last few pieces. This is the original skirts. Those are the new pockets. I'm going to change these ever so slightly. If you've seen the trouser videos that I've done, I'm going to use the pocket pattern from those trousers instead because I know they're big enough and I know the angles and everything are correct. So I'll just lift that from that pattern and we'll put the pockets into the skirts of this pattern. A few little scraps of velvet here and there, but really the very, very complicated stuff, all of the, the bodywork on this is now done. We've got some hand sewing to go and once I've done all the hand sewing on here and on the cape I can then put the exterior and the lining together on the body, I think. I think I can then do the skirts afterwards because of how everything goes together uh, and that will be really really good. I've got the hand sewing done on this now. All of this horsehair canvas here is tacked down and I've got the whole garment turned inside out at the moment. This is so that I can do the next part of the body, which is to sew the lining and the outer together. Wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do this uh, until I had a look at the pieces and realised that when I do the skirts on this, I can leave the bottom hem completely open, which gives me a good place to turn the whole garment inside out and right way out again. So it makes finishing off some of these seams just a little bit easier. We will go from this point here, down at the bottom, all the way around the lapel, around the collar, and back down to the front. And that will sew all of the body together. Now when we do the collar, we'll make sure that we just sew through the one layer that we need to. And for the sleeves, I've got these turned inside out, just like the rest of the garment. And uh, I'll cover these in a minute once I've done the body here because it's going to be a little bit easier to show these up close. For sewing the horsehair canvas on it's very simple. You just put a couple of tacks in, run a line, tack, run a line all the way down this edge to stop that from moving and then you can just see there's a couple of red stitches here and they just catch the 
sort of back of the fabric. You don't go all the way through to the front, you just pick up the back of this. And there's only a half a dozen stitches on there. It just stops this from moving around, keeps it where you want it. For the cape, all I've done there is just a quick whip stitch on the back for this binding, just done the edges there. I've got a couple of different options for how to fit this onto the coat to make it removable. Um, I've not decided which one I want to go with. I might even end up just hand sewing this on and not having it removable. I, I don't know. I'll have a look at my fixings and fastenings options before I make up my mind on that one. I sewed all the way around that seam and I had separated the collar into the front and the back and realised actually you don't need to do that. You can sew over the whole thing and it helps secure the collar in place and keeps it nice and flat. Not sure why I thought I should do it the other way. Last bit of sewing on this top portion is the sleeves and we need to join the lining to the outers but before we join the lining on, we need to chop a little bit off the bottom because we want it to be slightly shorter than what we have here so that the end of the lining sort of folds under itself and gives that nice finish like you'll see on a modern suit jacket then it's a case of putting the inside of the sleeve into the outside of the sleeve without twisting it matching up your seams and then we can machine sew this because I can turn the whole thing as you can see here through the waist hem because that's where the skirts are going to attach it's fully open at the moment we've got the best access for that so that's the easiest way I know of to do this stage so I'm going to restuff these sleeves sew them around and then turn them out and see what we end up with this gets a little bit fun to try and explain. When you have your inner and your outer, you're basically pulling both of your sleeves to the inside of the coat, the gap between the lining and the outer. And because we only have one seam to worry about, which is this one here and this one here, they're the seams that we want to match up. So we have a, a seam here, so we can follow that, and then you can follow it round until you get the two seams on your sleeves and then you match those up all the way to the cuff and that prevents you from twisting the sleeves round. Once you've got to that point, pin at the seam and work your way around until you have one complete tube like this. What should then happen is because you've been very careful is you should be able to pull one sleeve inside the other and yeah I've just pulled the wrong sleeve there because now this is inside out but it demonstrates the point because we have an open hem at the bottom we can actually do the sleeves this way and machine sewing this little piece here is much much quicker than doing it by hand which is exactly what I'm going to go and do well I've sewn everything together so that it looks like it's going to be impossible to deal with but hopefully it's not going to be impossible to deal with we'll rummage down this sleeve Ooh, I can feel I missed a pin somewhere, oh it's in the cuff so that's one sleeve pulled out with our turn back cuff Let's see if we can get the other one There's nothing snagged or caught up here. The last thing I'll do is I'll put a couple of tack stitches just at the bottom of the armhole and up at the shoulder seam and that will just help the lining to stay in place, stop it moving around too much. Uh, not much point recording that because, well, you won't be able to see it when I've done it. <laughs> but the lining of the coat ends up looking very smart. You've got this nice crisp finish up here. I haven't bothered putting a hanging loop on here because I, 
I prefer not to with my coats. I prefer to hang them on a coat hanger because sometimes when you put the loop at the top it can pull and stretch out the fabric here. With this being salvaged fabric I'm just a little bit more cautious about any sort of damage that might happen because it can sometimes be a little bit weaker. The collar on this side looks really nice and smart. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. So let's bob this on the mannequin and see what it looks like all together properly. Well I'm very happy with this. I have one problem with the mannequin at the moment which is the collar on this. I actually can't make it small enough. It's, uh, it's a, the shape around where your neck meets the shoulders doesn't match me so it's not quite fitting as I'd like up at the top but other than that I'm I'm just delighted with how much better this looks it's still the same coat that it was that I made all those years ago but it's just it's improved now the way the lapels sit is much nicer the way the collar sits is fantastic I'm really pleased with that and it's nice and flat down the front it always used to look a little bit wrinkly and I didn't know why but that is, is hugely improved and as I say I'm not putting any extra decoration on here, there'll just be some buttons. I don't want to put any pockets or anything up here, I want to leave this plain. The cape, I've just dropped that on for now. This is just so you can see it with it on. And around the back, equally, I'm, I'm so happy. Especially with the collar shape. It's This is what I wanted it to do and I didn't know how to get it to do that. And you can see the bias tape up here. It's not too obvious as a trim detail. It's not even that obvious that this would be removable. So I'm hoping when I figure out what I'm going to do on that front that maybe I'll hide the fastenings up here so that when the cloak is on, the collar hides where the fastenings are so it doesn't look removable but is. I think that might be the best option on this one. The sleeves, of course, have turned out very nicely as well. I know these fit really nicely on me, which is good. And they don't feel as tight on the cuff as they did when I was trying them on. So I think I'm just going to leave them as they are, and I can adjust them in the future if I need to. The one big challenge I have is finding some buttons that I like that match the buttons that go down the front. I don't have any of those kind of like tan sheepskin leather buttons at all in the same size or smaller, so I think I'm going to have to go with something different for the cuffs, and we need two or three on the cuffs, and ideally we need one at the end of each of these princess seams on the back. I've done this coat without the buttons on the back, and it just looks somehow more finished with a couple of buttons on there. One thing I was going to do on the coat, which I've ended up not doing, was I was going to put a belt on it because I thought that might help with the waistline and the visuals, but I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to be too fussy and it's not something that would be functional. And the other problem with a belt is when you go around the back, we have this V shape at the bottom. So theoretically, I'd probably have to stop the belt in this seam rather than running across the back, and that's just not going to look very nice. I, I can't see a way of incorporating a belt in this that's going to be what I like. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me in this video and following along with this project. We are very, very close to having it finished. Next time, I'm going to be figuring out the button situation and the pockets, and we'll be filling out which you can't see because they're well below shot, uh, how to put some extra volume in these skirts with the fabric I've got left over. Uh, that bit should be quite a lot of fun and very, very simple to do. Please do check the video description for more details on this project and other things, ways you can support the channel, all that good stuff. And obviously, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment. It all helps the channel grow and helps me be found. And hopefully, projects like this help other people with their projects. Thanks for tuning in, and I shall see you again next time.